not just the art and the beauty, it's the association with the, the bar builders that I find so fascinating. I was always amazed by their size, their scale, um, the detail. So um, they are um, magnificent structures. Uh, when you go into a big timber frame barn, and we're in a, a small one here, but you get the idea of it's half like being um, in a church and half like being on a tall ship. Um, and the, the character of a barn, the sights, the smells, the, everything about a barn, it just evokes a time and a place, uh, a period of our, our history that um, is gone. And I think when you see these barns and you realize the time and money it took to build them, um, people who built barns in the 18th and 19th century didn't build them for 20 years. They built them for 200 years. They were making a statement that this is going to be their property, their children's property, and their grandchildren's property. And the fact that a farmer would spend the time and money to, to invest in not only his future but the future of his family, um, I think has a lot of hidden messages to what people were thinking about, where they felt their role in their community, their role in the land they lived on, their role as part of the family member. Um, a lot of which we have lost as we become a transient society in the 20th and 21st century. It, you know, the term quality of life is one of these vague terms. I don't, I don't know what it means to everybody. But you take quality of life that, and sense of community, that your, your community is unique. And one of the reasons it's unique is because it's developed differently. And barns and buildings and parks and all these things are all the physical manifestations of how the community developed and what makes one community different from another. And so uh, they add to that sense of place. Um, I often um, do open space plans or, or do historic preservation plans and I usually engage the group by asking the question early on, what property or structure or place where to be changed, developed, destroyed, would change the character of your community. To try to figure out what do people think helps identify them as where they live. And often it is a historic building. Um, and, you know, they don't build them like that anymore and they never will. And once it's gone, the character of the community changes. Um, so, I think, talk about conservation, preservation, and to me they're, they're very much related obviously, but there are economic reasons, there are environmental reasons, there are also emotional reasons. And I think part of what we need to do a better job of is understanding that emotional re reason why people like historic buildings, why people like historic communities. Is it the sense of scale, walking community, is it, is it the beauty of the architecture? Um, and we don't quantify that enough, it's hard to quantify, whereas the cost to construct, the amount of embodied energy that you take to demolish a building and build a new one, even if it's very green, um, saying in historic preservation is the greenest building is the one that's already standing. Uh, and no matter how inefficient it is, when you think of all the energy it took to build and all the energy you'll take to demolish, take it to a landfill, rebuild, um, you're not going to save energy in the long run. Uh, the intellectual property owner may in terms of the, of the community, that energy is gone and expended. So, historic preservation is harder to explain that to. In, in land conservation or water conservation, you can say it's the air you breathe, the water you drink, or the food you eat. But with historic preservation, it's more emotional. Um, uh, land conservation, air, water, and food, you, know, you can understand that's food for the body, but historic preservation is more like food for the soul. There's something about, you know, a barn like this, you know, there were the dappled light and, and the, you know, the hay and the smells and the animals. Um, it, it gives me a sense of, you know, uh, relaxation and feeling more at one with the land and the other creatures on the land. And I think even for people who've never been in a barn, I do a lot of barn tours. When they get to them the first time, they have that same feeling. Um, and it's very hard to I mean, quantify, but it's something I've seen time and time again. Um, 
and many people want to see barns preserved if they never go in a barn, just knowing that they're there. If they ever, you know, that they could, if they wanted to, they would be able to. But once it's gone, they know they can't. So preserving them for that reason, there's part of that emotional, you know, it's a bedrock that you know if you really wanted to, you could, even if you never find the time to do it.